tutorial here on reading and data. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody is free to use this. All right, so one of the things that we want to do is read data into R. We don't want to manually type it in. That would take literally forever. And besides, people are going to send us data files, and we want to read them in. Uh, there'll be lots of data formats that we're interested in. The one we're going to focus on today is what's called a comma-separated values file. And I have an example of the file we're going to read in over here. It's called cherrytree.csv. Now, if I look at cherrytree.csv, this is just opened up in our studio. Notice that it has, between each of the values, a comma. Hence, comma-separated values. There's a comma separating each of the values. And that occurs for each row. So each row of data, there's a comma separating each of the values. And it also works on the first row, which is called a header row. And your file may or may not have a header row. Here, we have a header row. We have a diam is the title of the first column, the height is the title of the second column, volume is the height of the third column. So this header tells us the column heading names. So that's the idea of a header. And it also has commas between them. And notice that these are text and they have quotes around it. And, and that's also an indication that it's not data that you're reading, it's the actual name of the variable. All right, so let's go back over here and try to give this a go. So I'm going to put in here, read a CSV first, because that's one of the things we may want to do. So we're going to read a CSV, and then in our case, we're going to use the cherry, if I can type it, tree.csv file. So just so we're aware of what file we're going after, you should always put the file name in your file, uh, your R file, because you'll often have many, many, many projects going on, and often they might have very similar names, so it's good to know which file you read in. Uh, there's another way to do this, but the first way I'm going to do is just a use a navigation uh, approach. So here I'm going to make a new variable. I'm going to call it cherry tree. I'm going to do read, and if you notice, my tooltip brings up read.csv, which is the function that I wish to use. Uh, there's other ones you can see that'll read other types of things. Uh, but we're going to do read.csv. And notice, uh, on my tooltip, I also get this help area over here that tells me file header equals true, separator is a comma for comma-separated values. Uh, it says what a quote is. It's a backslash and a quote. Uh, it also has in here DEC. That's the decimal indicator. So some countries use a period and others use a comma. So you can actually have it put a comma in there as your decimal indicator if you're in a country that does that. All right, so I'm going to use file.choose uh, the first round here. And what that will allow me to do is it's going to bring up a window that I can use to navigate to my file. And I also put in here in my files header equals true. That way I know that the file that I'm reading in has a header in it. It is the default option, but I like to put it in there just to be sure that I'm reading the right thing in. All right, so this is the simple code. Uh, we can run this. Notice the finder window uh, pops up. I'm going to navigate to the file. Okay, I've found my file through all of my files. Uh, so it's cherrytree.csv, and you can open this up, and it read the file in. Now, if you're using this uh, for the first time and you haven't been in the course or taken anything else, you can look in the link below. It'll give a URL to all of the data sets we're going to use uh, throughout the semester. Uh, but here we're looking for the cherrytree.csv. Make sure it's on your machine. And then file.choose will allow you to navigate directly to the file. Okay. So uh, what happened? Well, if I look down here in the console, nothing happened, apparently. But if I look over here in my environment, I can actually see that it says my new data is cherry tree. It has 31 observations, and it has three variables. And if I click on it, I get more information. It gives me each of the column headings and what type of data it is. Notice this is a number. This is an integer. This is a number. And if I double click on it, it'll actually bring up a window like you would see in Excel. 
And, and that's kind of nice in the sense that you can just look and see if the data is there and if it's in the correct format. Now, that's all well and good. Uh, however, I usually like to put one other statement here, which is the head statement. And what it does is the head statement allows me to see the first six rows of the data set. Okay. There's also a tail statement that will allow me to see the last six rows, and we'll talk about that one in another video. However, the head one allows me to see the first six rows, and I can put it in my code, and it'll just display it to me. So I can immediately see what columns are there and if the data read incorrectly. And that's really all I want to use the head statement for. It, it saves me time from going over in the environment and opening it up and looking at it. Uh, especially if I'm doing a lot of work, I can just look at each one individually. If I'm reading in lots of data, I can look at each one individually and make sure they read in okay. All right. So this is uh, the first way to read in a CSV. The other way is to actually put the path to the file. So uh, let's give this one a go. So using the path, and my path will be very long, uh, by the way. And, and that's okay, because the tooltips will help you navigate to the path uh, to the files. Okay, using the path approach. Let's go and create a new data set, cherry tree 2. I'm going to use read.csv again. However, this time I'm going to have the path in here. I'm going to use the twiddle or the tilde or whatever you want to call it to take me to my user directory. And this works on a Mac or a Linux machine. I'm going to use the Google Drive. And if I tab, hit the tab button, it'll actually bring up the path for me. So I'm going to hit Google Drive. And inside the Google Drive, I'm going to do consulting. And if I hit tab, I can see consulting is there. And then I'm going to do short course. And then if I scroll down in short course, I will find my data set that I'm interested in uh, or a folder called data sets. There we go, data sets. And here is the cherry tree data set. So this very long path to my file and then do header equals true. So this is the general way you would do it. You would put your path up here that has the whole path to the file and then header equals true. And at the end of this other line over here, at the top line, which we can't see at the moment, make sure that you have a comma between the statements, okay? And then if I run this, I should get another cherry tree over here and this is cherry tree too and I can see that it just read it in directly um, this is another way of doing this and and it works quite well the most popular way though if you can is to set a working directory so if the file is already on your computer in a directory uh, you can use the working directory approach and uh, especially if you're going to have lots of files that you're going to be working with. Often, if you're on a network drive and people are leaving stuff everywhere, the path approach is the best because they can just leave it on the network drive. You have the direct map to it, and so you can just run the code again. If they update their file, it'll read in their new file. So let's try here uh, set WD, which is set working directory from a different video. Uh, here, you're just going to put the folder that it would be in. Uh, and that you want all of your output to go to as well. So just keep that in mind. This is where you want your output to go and where you read in all of your uh, items. So here I have data sets and that should work. And that will change my working directory so that I can use a shorter statement, especially if I'm going to do a lot of this. So uh, I can create cherry tree three, read.csv, and then here all I have to do is put in here the file name. And if I hit tab, it will automatically start filling it in for me. Uh, thank you, RStudio. And again, header equals true. And I can run this line. And when I do that, I can see cherry tree pops up over here in my environment, uh, just like I wanted it to. And then I can actually look at it. And I have three versions of the same data set, but I'm showing you three different ways of doing this. So let me just expand this out here real quick, do a quick overview. 
So we have read.csv, we use file.choose, that will allow us to go directly to uh, the finder and navigate to the file. But you have to know what file you're looking for, and often it's really important to leave it up in the title. Uh, the path approach is you're going to put the long path to your file, wherever it may be. If it's on your desktop, it's not that long. But here, you don't have to put in the data set name above it because it's actually sitting right in the path. Um, and then there's the working directory approach, which you set the working directory and then just read in the file based off of that working directory, and you just need the file name. All right, I hope this has been helpful, and we'll learn how to read in other data sets uh, in the next video.